So the first number we are studying today is called covariance. Now understand this carefully. All the numbers that we studied till now, mean, median, mode, standard deviation, they were single variable. That means x values or any set of values. Now the next set of numbers that we would be studying, we want to see relationship between two sets of variable. Okay, so for example, let us say about relationship we want to study that percentage return earned on a stock and percentage return earned on Sensex or a broad market indices. Okay, so let us say we are looking at some blue chip stock and we take data for last six years. We say that in the first year, Sensex grew by 12 percent, then 18 percent, let's say 25, 30, minus 10 percent, and 6 percent. How many values? Six values. So, the same year here, the return were 22 percent, then 16, 35, 45, minus 30, and 12%. That's how the values have been moving. Now what we want to see is that is there any sort of positive relationship positive or any sort of relationship between these sets of values. Okay, So that relationship we can measure by this number called as covariance. So how do you calculate covariance? x minus x bar divided by y minus sorry multiplied by y minus y bar divided by n. So write down the formula x minus x bar multiplied with y minus y bar divided by n. Done writing. So start calculating quickly. Calculate mean, calculate x minus x bar, then calculate y here calculate y minus y bar and then multiply the values add them up so this should be summation
sorry x is this these are the values x is these are the values x bar is this y bar is this x minus x bar means individual take the individual value reduce the mean 12 minus 13.5 18 minus 13.5 these all values are x वो बाद में सीखेंगे अभी तो ऐसे सीखो Just check your numbers with what I have so that you don't go in the wrong direction. Yes, is it done? Done, same, good. Shellish. Okay, if not, just, just focus on this now, okay. <coughs> X bar, how many of you got uh, mean as 16.67 and 13.5? All of you? Perfect. Then what I've assumed is return on stock is Y values, return on market is X value. That's that's going to be a common assumption for us. So Y minus Y bar, which is 22 minus 16.67, which would give us 5.33. So this is how this has been calculated. Then again 35 minus 16.67, 12 minus 16.67. So this is how we calculated Y minus Y bar. Then for X minus X bar, Again, 12 minus, oh, mistake, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's gone wrong, yeah, it's gone wrong. 
yes so 12 minus 13.50 then in the same fashion here 18 minus 13.50 so we have reduced the respective values there and then you get x minus x bar then y minus y bar into x minus x bar so 5.33 into minus 1.50 so on and so forth so take a total of them how is the total same total did not change right earlier also your covariance was same it's funny anyways okay so once you have all the total which is 1799 then take the total some 1799 divided by 6 and then that would give you 299.83 okay now this calculation can be cross checked by using a direct formula for covariance provided in excel so you can simply say covariance the first set of array covariance second set of array enter the answer is same which means the calculations are correct now even if you could not calculate do not worry because you don't have to calculate this but what you need to understand now is how do you interpret this number okay what is the interpretation so the number one interpretation is that covariance here is positive and a positive covariance means that relationship between two sets of variable is positive so what does it mean it means that when x will increase y will also increase okay so that's what it tells us now with covariance what is more important is what it does not tell us and that's where I think most of the people go wrong so a positive covariance you can write down positive covariance means positive relationship between two variables positive covariance means positive relationship between two variables negative covariance means negative relationship negative covariance means negative relationship Co zero covariance zero covariance means no relationship However, below that, very important sentence. However, covariance fails to quantify, covariance fails to quantify the strength of the relationship. Okay, and this is extremely important. So you can put this in a square box or underline this. But you need to be careful about this point. So, what do I mean to say? Understand this strength of the relationship. Let us say you have two pair of data, A and B, and C and D. You co calculated covariance, and covariance came out to be 150. It came out to be 350. Now, if I ask you that which two sets of variable have more stronger positive relationship, what should be the answer? Yes, it looks like it should be C and D, but that is incorrect. So you cannot say that a higher covariance number leads to a higher, stronger relationship. The only thing that covariance tells you is that there is a positive relationship, but it will not tell you. So which means in case of covariance, 350 is not higher than 150. Okay, why? So now think of it, look at this carefully. Y is 22 and this is 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to copy paste this data. Let me put it here. Now, if I multiply both the values with 100, if I multiply x with 100, y with 100, the relationship between them is still going to be same. Relationship won't change, right? So let's experiment. Let me multiply them with 100. So they have been multiplied with 100 now. Okay. Now let's calculate a covariance. So, covariance, this is your first set of data, second array, 
and covariance comes out to be a substantially larger number. So what is it telling you? It is telling you that even though the relationship between, so if I call these variables as let's say a and b, even though the relationship between a and b and x and y is same, no difference in the relationship, only because the values, absolute values were very higher, covariance turned out to be very higher. Is the logic clear here? So the number of covariance, the number that you get depends on what is the size of value of your variable and a higher covariance number does not necessarily denote a more stronger relationship. Is this point crystal clear? So this is the problem with covariance. So then the question is how do I overcome this? Okay. So how we can overcome this is, and now look at this carefully, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the standard deviations. Okay. So to calculate standard deviation I'm going to use a simple formula standard deviation p which is the standard deviation of the population so standard deviation of y values here which came out to be 23.690 standard deviation 13 okay i'm just copy pasting that formula here it came out to be 2369 it came out to be 1314 now see understand this that the way covariance was affected by absolute values in the same fashion, standard deviation is also affected. That if the absolute values are higher, standard deviation as a number is higher. So what we can do now is, we can take a higher value of covariance, higher value of standard deviation and standardize that relationship. So how do we standardize that relationship? We are going to calculate a new number. That number is going to be higher value of covariance divided by standard deviation of x multiplied with standard deviation of y. Since covariance as a value is very high, standard deviation was also high, it is going to standardize that number. So let's see how does it work. Covariance divided by multiplication of two standard deviations. It came out to be 0.96. And in the same fashion, covariance divided by multiplication of two standard deviations and it again came out to be 0.96 and now this number is telling us that relationship between the two sets of data is same. It is not telling us that C and D or that set of data is higher than this. So this new number that we've calculated we call this number as huh, we call this number as correlation coefficient. Okay so why do we need to calculate correlation because covariance is a deficiency. And to overcome that, we divide covariance with two standard deviations and we get correlation. And now the problem with correlation is solved that if you see two correlation, so again going back to the same example, if you say A and B and C and D, if A and B is let's say 0.5 correlation and C and D is 0.7, now you can say that C and D has got more stronger relationship than A and B. So correlation also quantifies the degree of relationship between the two, which covariance did not. Are we clear here? So if you want, you can write down these examples quickly.
Have you done? Now another important thing with correl correlation is that correlation as a number which is denoted by small r. Okay, it is also called as Pearson's correlation coefficient. Why Pearson's? Why do we call it as Pearson's correlation coefficient? Because Pearson came up with this idea. So we call this as Pearson's correlation coefficient. So R is always bounded by negative 1 on the left and positive 1 on the right. Okay, that means correlation coefficient would always be between minus 1 and plus 1. Now, how do you interpret correlation coefficient? So let's say I tell you that correlation coefficient is 0.7 okay and this interpretation is extremely important correlation coefficient is 0.7 it's between stock A and stock B so when stock A increased by 10% can I say that stock B will increase by 7% because correlation is 0.7 so this interpretation is incorrect Okay, it does not give you how two datas will move together. So what is the meaning of that 0 0.7? 0 0.7 is a positive number. Okay, and you should learn to interpret correlation in percentage terms. So when stock A increased, there is 70% chance that stock B will increase. But by how much we don't know that. Okay, what we know is that there is a positive relationship and possibility of that relationship is 70%. So when stock A increase, stock B will increase. What is the chance? 70%. But we do not know by how much. Again, if you want to know by how much, we need to go a step further and calculate regressions. So as of now, what correlation will simply give us is that what is the possibility that if one increases, other will increase. If correlation is minus 0.6, what does it mean? That if stock A increased, there is a 60% chance that stock B will decrease in the other direction. But we cannot say that if A increases by 10, B will decrease by 6. No, that's incorrect. That comes from regression, not from correlation. Are we clear here?